Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we are so delighted and grateful that you have welcomed us into your home. We would love to hear from you. I pray that you are having a blessed Lent. Here we are in the fifth week of Lent. Send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And on our show today, we will have James Day. Now, James is the operations manager at EWTN West Coast Studio in Orange County, California. And today we're going to talk about a book that he wrote He's the author of a great book called St. Michael the Archangel. And this wonderful book is available at EWTNRC.com. So if you're looking to up your game with um, Michael the Archangel, this is a great yeah. book for you. Yeah. Because I know that many of us, um, maybe in our prayer life daily, or in our prayer life, uh, maybe at, at masses, many parishes pray at the end of mass. Um, they'll pray St. Michael the, the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in battle. battle, right? And so that wonderful prayer, and we certainly pray it every single day we do. Um, in our closing prayer as a married couple yeah. because we, don't, we just want all the covering, right. all the protection, everything that we possibly can have because it's a war out there. That's right. And it's a war in, in, in your home and, and everywhere you go, it seems. So the book, St. Michael, the Archangel, James Day, has been a real blessing for us, as yes. you said. And I really feel like I've grown mm -hmm. <laughs> in my intimacy with St. Michael. So I don't know how that's exactly happened. He covers a lot of things in terms of, of uh, scripture in St. Michael, other religions in St. Michael. I wasn't so aware of St. Michael being so large for the nation mm -hmm. of Israel and then uh, also in Islam. Yes. And... Uh, St. Michael in the liturgy, St. Michael in the mass, St. Michael in churches, St. Michael, St. Michael, St. Michael, mm -hmm. in history of the church and Europe and other places. And so it, it was really good, but I, I, I've just grown in relationship with him as a result of the book. Mm -hmm. And I just feel, yeah, he seemed a little unapproachable to me. Yes. You know, before, he's just so big and so mighty. I just figured it's God in him, like I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing exactly with him. But now I feel like I have permission to get closer in with him and to say, yes, yes, uh, the wickedness and the snares of the devil. You know, there's been times in my mm -hmm. life where, um, you know, in work, in ministry and so on, and, and, and I thought I was seeing something correctly and then I didn't about a situation or a person or whatever. And it was like, how could I not have seen that? And the Lord, I think, spoke to me, the Spirit of the Lord, and said, you don't know how wicked wickedness is. You don't know how wicked wickedness is. That's happened to me three times in my life, I mm -hmm. guess, or so, that I just didn't get it. I just didn't see it. St. Michael sees it. Right. St. Michael knows how wicked wickedness is. St. Michael understands that phrase in the scripture that says, the mystery of iniquity. Yes. And now I feel like I'm partnered with him mm -hmm. and saying, St. Michael, deal with the wickedness in my own life, around me, the things I can't see. You know, go after the things that are bad and filthy and evil about the devil. You're assigned to take, take him out. You know, just about more fully than anybody, yes. and, and I want to be in relation with you in this fight. Well, and EWTNRC.com sells fabulous, beautiful statues of St. Michael the Archangel. Yeah. So if you're looking you think, you know what, I want a statue, I want to increase my knowledge, my spiritual journey with him, go to EWTNRC.com for we'll, that also. We'll be right back with James Day and his wonderful book, St. Michael the Archangel. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back, Larry at Home with Jim and Joy. And today our guest is James Day. Now James is the operations manager at the EWTN West Coast Studio. And he's the author of a great book that we are gonna share with you today, St. Michael the Archangel. And it's available from EWTNRC.com. Well James, we wanna welcome you to At Home. It's been a while since you've been on. And the last time I think you were on, your wife was pregnant and so your your wife, Christina, your beautiful baby, Isla, how old is she now and how are you guys? 
Always great to be with you, Jim and Joy. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, Isla Rose, she's, uh, she's 11 months old today. Okay. Uh, wow. So I love how I, I show up every once in a while. There's always <laughs> something going happening. on in the world and in our lives. And yeah. So. Sorry, we mispronounced, Wonderful to be mispronounced the name. How did you come up with Isla? Yeah. Isla. How did yeah. you get No, no, that's a great, no, that's a great question. Actually, uh, so I, I discovered an Our Lady of the Isles. Uh, Christina and I both have Irish roots. Christina Scotch, Scotch Irish. So there's the devotion to Our Lady of the Isle up there in the United Kingdom. So we uh, came up with Isla Rose um, as, uh, as her name, yeah. It's beautiful. 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 Well, good. Now tell our family all that you do out there on the West Coast, being the operations manager, and how, how yeah. is EWTN faring out there on the West Coast, and don't, especially during COVID? And, and don't tell us all that you do, or there'll be no time for the book. <laughs> but, but go ahead, tell us a little bit no, about no, your, your job and what you do. Yeah, it's been a really busy last year, believe it or not, because uh, this was a, a hub for friends such as the Napa Institute or Father Spitzer's Magis Center. He did a lot of his credible Catholic interviews out of our studio here. The Diocese of Orange, where we're based on the campus of the Diocese of Orange, Diocese of Orange folks came in and said, hey, can we record some messages to our people out there at the parishes because we can't go to them. Mm -hmm. So EWTN was really helpful for a lot of folks. And we did a lot of interviews and, and our shows kept going in Spanish and English. So I sort of manage the day-to-day -day operations here and uh, get these books off when I can. But uh, yeah, but yeah it's, it's, a, it's a blessed life. Well, well thanks great. for all that you're doing from east to west. EWTN is there promoting Christ and his church. Thank you for your part in that. So the book... As I said early on, we enjoyed it so very, very much, really influenced my life. I'm understanding that there's thousands of copies that have been sold. You've actually yeah. had a number of reprints. Uh, what's up? What's going on? Who is, you have angelic help in promoting this or what's happening? <laughs> First off, your introduction was quite moving, and, and thank sure. you for sharing that. That that means a lot, and uh, so thank you. Yes, uh, it, it has been a blessing that the book has done so well. Uh, it's through our Sunday visitor, who you know, a great partner there. Uh, we, you know, I did not expect it to be uh, so successful, and uh, you know, I'm not an author. That's not my primary. Uh, job, right, as we just discussed. So this is this is really more to get the story of St. Michael out there and hopefully to propel maybe people who have been away from a church or have been away from prayer to return to the Eucharistic Lord. That, that's through maybe St. Michael's intercession. That's really my hope for it. So it's wonderful to see its success. Yeah. So how would you describe the book, you know, when you're writing about a person, well, right. about a human, it's kind of a biography. <laughs> Can we say that about an archangel? I think that's valid. No, I think that's valid because actually the working title was St. Michael, colon, biography of an archangel. Um, we wanted to make it a little less confusing maybe because, you know, people might, might get confused by that. But I really wanted to tell the story of Michael from his role in Scripture, which is, which is few and far between, but very important throughout Christian tradition, which is really uh, significant. And I really had no idea up until to the point where he is today through his prayers, through our prayers to him, through his intercessions, through his apparitions, through his uh, signs and messages of protection. So I really wanted to cover the gamut. And in a way, a biography fits that description. So I think that is valid, Jim. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the points you make in your book um, I hope that I got it right, but, but you, you had a, a chapter there where you were speaking about, you know, we think of angels, that that's their um, kind of essence and their entity, but you say no, angels like is a title, and that they're really spirits, that angels are spirits, and angel is kind of identifies them. Could you explain that, unpack that a little bit? I hadn't heard that, and we need to know that. Yeah. Well, I would, uh, I would say you can call them angelic beings. Okay. Uh, and we can use angel as an adjective because they are beings created by God. They are God's creatures. Uh, so they're not independent of God, of course. So they are part, part of uh, creation, part of God's creatures. Um, there's a certain amount that were created. So, uh, the, you know, and they have free will. So, you know, in a way we, we can look at them as um, counterparts, as, 
as beings involved in our day-to-day -day lives. Why? Because they know that the ultimate goal is to reach the light of mm -hmm. the holy face. Yeah. And, and that's their job. Well, I love it that you, you say how they are, they have a mission. And uh, yeah. St. Michael the Archangel, certainly his mission is to save souls, right? Well, you talk about how, uh, you, certainly you talk about the Old Testament and history and everything, but how can St. Michael assist us and aid us daily in a, in a time of crisis in our own personal lives? Well, that cuts right to the heart of why I wrote this book, because um, in uh, fall of 2018, and we don't, we don't want to rehash all of 2018, but it wasn't a great year in the life of the church. Pope Francis, to counter that, suggested returning to saying the prayer to St. Michael, which, as you know, some continue to do at the end of Mass or, or whatever, but he wanted everyone to say the prayer to St. Michael throughout the fall of 2018, and it was at that time I wrote this article about how St. Michael can help uh, in times of crisis and just touched on, on things here and there throughout history. I had not written the book yet. This was for the Orange County Catholic, and then the article came out, and then something came upon me that said, I wonder if there's a book here, uh, and so I kind of went from there. So it, it started reminding the faithful that St. Michael's job is protector in times of crisis, and we are constantly in a time of crisis in the life of the faith. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. James, do me a favor. If you would just say the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. We always assume, well, everybody knows Absolutely. that in the Catholic Church, but you know there's a lot of people that may not know that or have ever prayed it or know it remotely. And then there's so many uh, non-Catholics that, that join our show. Sure. Before we uh, came here, Joy and I work in a crisis pregnancy center and we have Catholics and non-Catholics. I told them about the show today and how I've grown in my my love for wow. St. Michael the Archangel. And then, you know, I, I said the prayer. And I think that may have been the first time half of our staff, like, ever really heard the prayer. So please, you just say it oh, so wow. that those not familiar with it can, can just hear it. And I know God will minister to us. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray to thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You know, Thank that, you. that you want to talk about building bridges between mm. uh, Catholics and non-Catholics, um, be, because it doesn't seem like, you know, the, the, the Protestants we have with us, you know, you can get on some of the finer notes of Catholicism and maybe there's something, well, what do you mean by the Eucharist? This is what we mean or uh, you know, Our Lady and so on. But you know what? They feel okay about St. Michael because they know him from the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. And the Protestants have read yes. that, and they know that maybe he has something to do with the end times and something with, you know, throwing Satan out of heaven and, and has defeated him. So they're really interested in this. They say, wow, you have a whole developed theology on, on St. Michael. That's really interesting. Speak about, um, well, anyway, th that prayer itself, uh, the yeah. wickedness and snares of the devil. I mean, doesn't everybody who's a, is a Christian or a Jew uh, maybe Muslims as well, want to be delivered from the wickedness and the snares of the devil. Don't we all know that someplace in our own lives and say, there really is wickedness, there really is evil, maybe I've done some of this, or this has just happened to me, you know, and, and we, we see what's going on in this world, as you said. It's just to know that somebody assisting our Lord that has that special mission and power. Unpack that for us more fully, the hope. We're all, we're not without problems in our own lives. We're not without struggle. Everyone has their own cross to carry, whatever faith, as you said. And th that is a great um, comment because St. Michael does bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, I was focusing in the book on the bridge between the Old and the New Testament, between the Jewish tradition and the Christian tradition. Uh, you take it a step further there and, and it expand it out to other, other faiths. And so I, I, I think that's, that's wonderful. Um, so we're not all without struggle. St. Michael Again, it's his job to be our protector, to defend us in battle. And I want to make clear, and I try to do this in the book, that this isn't always about, this isn't Lord of the Rings battles right. that we're talking about, you know? This isn't the crusade, St. Michael going in to, to, to defend on, on a horse. The battles are very personal, but they feel epic. They feel like those Lord of the Ring battles. But we have to remind ourselves is to bring St. Michael maybe off a pedestal and, yes. and I think that's what he wants because he's very humble and, and he comes from a, a, a low choir of angels. So 
we all go through struggle. St. Michael is there to help, and he is humble. He, he will bring us through to the virtues of Christ if we allow him. Mm. Well, you know, I totally experienced what Jim was saying about we would stand in front of the abortion clinics for years, and I was not Catholic at the time. And there would be many Catholics out there, and, you know, they would be praying the, as a girl would go into the abortion mill, they would be praying the St. Michael prayer. And so you learn it as you're on the streets because that's a place of wow. real battle, right? And so, yeah, and, you, and you know what? He belongs to the whole world. He belongs to the church, be you Protestant, Catholic, Jewish. He belongs to the people of God because he comes from God. But also in the battles of our, of our families. Maybe we have some that are battling addictions. Um, maybe battles of pride and selfishness and prayerlessness. Those are the places he wants to come in. As a mother, as a grandmother, you're warring for the souls of your children and your grandchildren. I want St. Michael in those places, don't I? I, I don't know how else to better <laughs> Better summarize that than what you just did there, Joy, because uh, his role is, yeah, protector uh, of the family, a protector of uh, people at times of death, because we know Satan comes at the final moments to maybe snare a soul mm -hmm. for the last time. And But St. Michael, uh, uh, it, there is a devotion of St. Michael at the time of death. There's also a devotion of St. Michael as, as protector of the Blessed Sacrament. He hovers at the uh, altar during every mass. Uh, he's there at funerals uh, for orations uh, and invokes St. Michael's name. So he is there. We just need to call on him more than perhaps we are doing. Mm -hmm. And you've got that all in your book then, these different prayers, devotions. There's a chaplet as well. Uh, and so I wasn't aware of so many of these things, but what great resources. Most of us just simply know the prayer of St. Michael, and I don't know how many of us are even praying that. You um, yeah. devote a good part of your book to the sword of St. Michael. Can you yeah. unpack that for us, what you mean by the sword of St. Michael? Okay, I sure will. If you were to look at uh, maybe a satellite image of, of, uh, of the Earth, um, there is a straight geographical line, which was totally not planned, by the way. By some, someone didn't come up with this. It, it really just happened. There's a straight geographical line from Ireland through England, France, Italy. Oh, perfect. You see it right there on the yes. screen, culminating in Israel. Um, these are all monasteries and, and shrines devoted to St. Michael. And it's this notion that the sword, when he thrust Satan from heaven, the sword fell to earth in that, in that geographical line, which is, which is pretty epic. But um, it just shows, first off, how how rooted Europe is, that continent is, to St. Michael. Mm -hmm. um, and I get that more in the book. But these are eye-popping places that are still existing today. Mont Saint-Michel is one in France. So it just shows the providence of St. Michael throughout, uh, throughout history. Well, when we saw that in the book, we were like, wow, look at this. You know, as to say, God God was is writing history. He's like, pay attention to this. Like, call on him, people of God, and he will come. He will aid you. He will assist you. And you said so importantly, especially at the time of death, when people are battling addictions, maybe overdoses, and maybe they were a Christian, and their family members are worrying about them. What a time to call on him that their soul would not be taken. Yes. I, no, I agree. And if I can add, too, a lot of, let's say, my peers, and, and I'm sure you know people, uh, younger people who have left the faith, who are now becoming caretakers, caregivers to the older generation, mm -hmm. they have a chance when that person, if they accept the last rites, if they accept wanting to die within the church, they have a chance to see what it's what a holy, happy Catholic death is like. Mm -hmm. And that might sp spark a, a much needed conversion. Yes. James, thanks so much for beginning to open the book up to us, St. Michael, the Archangel. And uh, there's much, much more in this book, and we'll pick that up a little bit more on um, tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, so much of this... Um, is coming out of your intimacy with him, and we'll touch on that as well. Just in about 30 seconds, just leave us with a parting word regarding St. Michael. Well, I'm really glad to be on here, and I just encourage people that, uh, you know, I wrote this book, but I really have an interest in wanting people to look at St. Michael to, ex to expand their faith life, mm -hmm. to put on the armor of God, not as something uh, military, but as, as something virtuous, mm. the armor of the virtue of Christ, the, the virtue of humility. Amen. James Day, thanks so much. See you again tomorrow.
Plenty okay. more to come. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back while you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today we bring to you Father John Paul. <laughs> and we are so delighted that Father is with us. Father, what did you think of our interview with James Day? Well, it's a great topic. I think all of us, uh, we always invoke the protection of the angels. I know at her choice, yes. um, that's something that we do at every Mass, after Mass, every Mass here at EWTN. Um, and all throughout the grounds of EWTN, when you walk around the grounds, you see angels everywhere. And there's an old story about um, Mother Angelica walking up with a group of pilgrims. And a lady turned around and a lady literally saw an angel mm -hmm. on top of the studio here. And she said, Mother, look at that. Do you see that angel? And Mother, look, Mother turned around and said, oh, honey, I, that happens all the time around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't know. It's one of those things. Yeah. It's, it's not revelation. It's private. Uh -huh. yes, <laughs> you know, yes. you don't have to believe it, but I mm -hmm. do believe it. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to think, you know, if, if you know the story of how uh, Mother Angelica went up to the radio station and in her venture uh, to, of trying to start a shortwave radio, radio station in St. Clair County, she went up to the property and she literally saw St. Michael the Archangel mm -hmm. come down out of heaven and point to these grounds. And that's why we have that big shortwave radio station. Mm -hmm. And I might add, the most powerful privately owned shortwave radio station in the entire world. That's amazing. We and it is up a mountain. Isn't up it? a mountain. <laughs> and it really shouldn't work. That's the miracle of it all. Shortwave radio stations should be built uh, near bodies of water, generally. So from an engineering standpoint, it really should not work. It should not have that much power, mm -hmm. but it does. Mm -hmm. I think it's because of the I think the it's angels. generated by yeah. God. Yeah. Yes. I think it's the protection of it, the angels. Mm -hmm. I mean, the story that you shared about the woman who believes she saw that angel yeah. and Mother Angelica saying, well, you know, honey, they're here you know, all the time or we see them. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be believed yeah. as, but you know what? Exactly. I figure it's happening because we're a family and the angels are a part of this family. Yes. Mm -hmm. And us who are trying to become saints, we're part of the family. The souls going through purg purgation, they're part of the family. The saints are part of the family. So all this, this stuff is happening all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that we get to see it, but sure. all this is operative. And sometimes by faith, mm -hmm. we just have to believe and so this is happening, it's for our good, but the more you can enter into it and believe, it seems like more of it does happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, is, like there is an invisible realm that we don't see. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's just as you know, real as the stuff that we can see, or even more real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we just need to participate with the yeah. invisible realm mm -hmm. that we don't see. And, and we do. And we, know their presence, know their power, know that we're not alone, and yeah. we don't have to be afraid. Yes. Part of it is, Amen. you know, I mean, it's happening, but if you can get a little bit more educated about a particular saint or an angel, you know, it kind of opens things mm -hmm. up. It opens the window for the breath to, well, to come in. Add, like, I've grown in my relationship. Yeah, read read the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation talks about St. Michael the Archangel and the, the fall of the angels and exactly what happened. So, you know, Catholics and Protestants can both read that mm -hmm. and see that Michael is within the scriptures. Yes. St. Michael Amen. the Archangel. And he wants to aid us and assist us in this life. Close us in a prayer and with a blessing, Father. Family, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may he turn his face to you and be merciful to you. May he show you his kindness and give you his peace. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Well, we always like to say that you are never alone, and you're not. There's mm -hmm. angels and hosts of angels all about us and, and the saints. And so you be encouraged. You walk, but you do not walk alone. And so many have walked this way. You're an important part of this EW10 family. You're never alone, and you're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now. <laughs>